Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave. Today we're going to be looking at Arsenal versus Manchester City in the first tactical preview of the year. You guys voted for it on my YouTube channel every Monday. A poll is going to go out and you guys got to get in there and vote for which game you want me to preview. This week we've got Arsenal versus Manchester City, so let's get this party started. Today we're going to go through predicted 11s for each team, then we're going to move on to three tactical talking points for all the fun and excitement of the opening weekend of the Premier League. First up, let's do predicted 11s. We're going to go with the away team first, Manchester City. After Manchester City's 2-0 win in the Community Shield, I think Pep Guardiola will make some slight changes to his starting 11. First up, I think Leroy Sarno may be out the side. Another poor performance in a big game. Failed to get a shot on goal, create a chance, zero assists and zero goals. It was a bad display from the German international. In terms of who I think he's going to replace him on the left wing, it will be Riyad Mahrez with Bernardo Silva coming on the right-hand side. Bernardo Silva, of course, grabbed the assist for the final Sergio Aguero goal. And Mahrez really impressed on the right wing before moving to left-hand side, Manchester City's new summer signing. His link-up play with Benjamin Mendy on the left was really good. Riyad Mahrez always likes to drive inside, opening up that big, big space for one of the best attacking left-backs in world football to get on that overlap, Benjamin Mendy. Expect that to be a weapon for City against Arsenal at the Emirates. In terms of the midfield, there'll be no Kevin De Bruyne. Him and Raheem Sterling only returned to training last week. The big thing there, of course, is Manchester City's 2 3 8. That's how they break teams down. They build up with three at the back, a defensive midfielder, one of the wing backs pushes really high. Then you've got Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva usually floating in between the lines, creating all sorts of chaos. De Bruyne in the Premier League last season grabbed the most assists and expect him to have another good season. But there's another exciting prospect at Manchester City that's going to come into the starting lineup. That, of course, is Phil Foden, grabbed an assist in the Community Shield for, of course, Aguero's opener. Played really well, driving through the centre of the pitch with the ball at his feet before shipping it to the Argentinian international. Phil Foden's going to be an absolute star in the making and he's going to come in to deputise for Kevin De Bruyne. Moving to Arsenal, Unai Emery's pretty much set them up with a 4-2-3-1 in pre-season. He did try and test the 4-3-3, but he's gone back to his severe blueprint, which is absolutely fantastic. Expect him to go with Gwendozi and El Nene deep in midfield. Both players have quite impressed under Emery. Quite interesting to see someone like El Nene with a manager that trusts him. And at defensive midfield, that's going to be crucial to stopping City, but we'll talk about that a bit later on. There's some interesting tactical decisions available for Emery to make. Potentially, he'll go with Iwobi on the left wing, Mkhitaryan on the right wing, and Mesut Ozil off Abemiang. I personally think, though, that will open them up too much to Manchester City's ball-playing positional play. In terms of the back four as well, Socrates and Mustafi need to be protected. That is really important. But Arsenal have looked good in pre-season, and someone like Hector Bellerin expect him to absolutely explode under Unai Emery. Anyway, guys, let's move on to the three talking points. First up, it's all about the press for Arsenal. Over the last few seasons, the teams that have beaten Pep Guardiola's Manchester City have pressed them out of the back. Think Liverpool, of course, in the Champions League last season. They pressed them high, they won the ball, they transitioned and scored some goals from those moves. In terms of breaking up Pep Guardiola's teams, it's all about applying that pressure deep in the opposition's half. Applying pressure on the centre-halves, applying pressure on the defensive midfielder, before transitioning back. The problem with Chelsea and the Community Shield is that they didn't transition back to a defensive shape. They stayed in their medium block with a really high line. You don't want to do that against Pep Guardiola's sides because if they can get in between the lines, in between your midfield and your defence, they're going to cause chaos. And if you play so high, the through ball is always on. Leroy Sane has got great pace, Mahrez has got good pace and Sergio Aguero as well. So that's a big problem that Chelsea had in the Community Shield. What you want to do is you want to transition to a deeper shape. And Unai Emery at Sevilla had a great model for that. Again, I mentioned the two strong defensive midfielders. Lucas Treya potentially could come into this game, but I do think he'll go with El Nene and Guendouzi just because of their fitness. Again, Treya playing at the World Cup for Uruguay. Those guys really need to press uh, well in the opposition's half before dropping back and defending deep. Also at Sevilla, Unai Emery liked to play a floating playmaker that would play arguably on the counter-attack in the bigger games, the two strong DMs and that guy drifting in between the lines, Rakitic, and of course, Eva Benega. That's something that Arsenal could do, um, and considering someone like Mesut Ozil that used to be so deadly on the counter, could be an option there. But I'm going to talk to you about point number two, about that attacker midfield position. But anyway, let's go to another option for Unai Emery in terms of his defensive side on the right wing. As I mentioned before, City's strength this season is going to be on that left-hand side, Mares and Benjamin Mendy. For, of course, on Emirates to deal with this at the Emirates, I feel that he should go with two right-backs. We've seen him do that before against Pep Guardiola's Barcelona, but again, Unai Emery hasn't beaten Pep Guardiola 
as a manager, which is a big thing. But I did like his thoughts behind this move. Licksteiner on the right wing and Hector Bellerin as a fullback could work really well in a transition. Defensively, that works well in terms of pressing high and then transitioning back. And again, you've got that fluidity of both players being comfortable at right wing and at right back. Hector Bellerin carrying on the counter could be a really good weapon down that right hand side. We saw Liverpool break frequently down City's left, of course, Liverpool's right, in the Champions League ties. Again, another weakness for City is countering down that right hand side from deep with pace with power, something that Hector Bellerin could do. So that's another tactical option, but I feel he will go with Henrik Mkhitaryan. The creativity may be needed on the right wing. For Manchester City, they've slightly changed as well. Again, if Unai Emery does play a defensive right-hand side, City play an aggressive left-hand side. It's going to mean that Carl Walker may have to sit a little bit more. Carl Walker's massively improved under Pep Guardiola. I didn't think he'd be able to get to this level. At Tottenham under Pochettino, he was more of a pacey wing-back. Now he's turned into a complete wing-back. Very, very good on the ball. The triangle last season, of course, was Carl Walker carrying the ball out, firing the ball to either De Bruyne or, again, higher up the pitch, Raheem Sterling. What I feel this team will move to now, Benjamin Mendy being the attacking fullback or the attacking wing back on the left hand side, Carl Walker will play a little bit more inverted. Again, Pep Guardiola has brought these inverted fullbacks into modern football. Again, Philip Lahm, of course, at Bayern Munich. And that could be what Carl Walker does enter that central area, overload that area, overload another body into that zone, allowing City to create a good platform to play possession football. But also in the transition, Guardiola likes to have players in that central area to deal with the break. And again, Carl Walker could be massively important in this game. Again, Again, he's going to be freed up in a ball playing sense if you know it's slightly more defensive on the right hand side for Arsenal there might not be the same pressure on that left wing but one battle again for Arsenal that could be quite good is if Abemiang plays on that left hand side that would be perfect in terms of counter-attacking Mo Salah destroyed City in the Champions League very direct play and that's something I feel Abemiang could do on that wing again looking for through balls but also looking for the ball to feet and then taking Carl Walker on the thing that Carl Walker has versus what City had Laporte doing in the Champions League game last season was that Carl Walker's got pace and good defensive ability so that's going to be a really good battle as well Bemiang up against Carl Walker. On to tactical point number two. Let's talk about false nines because that's what we want to do. Manchester City blew the Premier League away last season. They scored loads of goals, got loads of points, and they were a really good team from back to front. But one thing that they struggled with, not only teams that pressed them high, was false nines. You think the two games where City were kind of really undone, one was Liverpool, Firmino at false nine, but also the second half against Manchester United in the Premier League. United coming but from two goals down to win 3-2. The big thing there was Jess Lingard was moved inside, arguably playing as a false nine. What a false nine gives you as a, as a side against Manchester City is someone that can link the play on the counter-attack. You think if you play a traditional target man, you fire balls into his feet or to his head or to his chest, he's not going to have the best sort of ability to bring that ball down. What Firmino did so well for Liverpool was bring players into play, drop off the centre-backs off Manchester City, overload Fernandinho at defensive midfield and allow runners to go past him, ahead of him. And that was perfect for Firmino as a false nine to play the likes of Mane and Salah in ahead of him, exposing City from runs wide in behind their defence. Again, so crucial to beating them. Which moves us on to the number 10 for Arsenal, that floating playmaker. I predict it will be Mesut Ozil that's going to be there, but I feel you need a little bit more energy in there. Aaron Ramsey currently has an injury or a knock, but if he can come back into the side and play that number 10 role, I think it'd be perfect. Not only has he got that ability and work rate to press like an absolute dog, but he has that movement to get into the penalty area. In terms of goals from central midfield, he's Arsenal's top scorer for around the last three or four seasons. And I think he's got that ability to move forward ahead of the false nine and get into that space that the false nine has opened up for him. You take Paul Pogba's second goal against Manchester City in that game where they came back from 3-2. The big thing there was Jess Lingard's movement from a deeper position to pull centre-backs out of the way and then that forward motion. And again, Aaron Ramsey will be perfect for doing that if Lacazette, maybe playing as a false nine, not as a traditional number nine, can start from a deep position, drive the centre-backs open, open up that space, Ramsey gets in there and we all know that Aaron Ramsey can finish. That's how I feel Arsenal can really unlock Manchester City. We know that City are really good on the ball, but there's moments that you can break on them and you can open them up. Vitally important for Arsenal, play a false nine and an energetic number 10. I feel if Ozil plays there, he's just going to get criticised and he's not going to have a good game. There's a position for him potentially on the right-hand side if uh, Unai Emery doesn't want to go as defensive as I think he should go to, that could look for those balls on the transition. Uh, again, looking for the balls over the top to Ramsey if he's making the run. But I do feel that Ramsey as a 10 will be perfect. If not Ramsey, it will be if he's fit. Again, Unai Emery needs energy at number 10. Let's move on to the final topic of discussion today, and that is Sergio Aguero. For me, he's going to have an unbelievable season in front of goal. We already saw his two goals in the Community Shield. What I like there, again, is his freshness of his finishing. So clean, so quick, so powerful. 
in terms of the shot power, in terms of how he shifts the ball, and that is going to be a massive worry for, of course, both Mustafi and Socrates. Socrates, Papa Staphopoulos. Yes, that's right. I absolutely nailed that name. What a surprise. But in terms of how Aguero should play against those guys, it's when there's a situation when Arsenal's midfield has been bypassed. You know, City using their free eights, getting in between that space, and then looking to play to Sergio Aguero's feet. If Manchester City can play to Aguero's feet and allow him to directly take on either of those centre-backs, there's going to be one outcome there. Sergio Aguero's got eight goals and two assists in 14 games against Arsenal since moving to Manchester City. And again, it will be vitally important to unlock that door if Arsenal are sitting deep, open up that space, and then bang, give it to Aguero's feet, and it's goal time. That's going to be the big, big worry for Arsenal. Also on that left-hand side, if Mendy and Mares can combine and then look to cut the ball back to Aguero, again, that's a situation that Socrates and, of course, Mustafi may struggle to deal with. They're two sort of burly centre halves in a way, two aggressive burly centre halves. But if you can turn them or get balls to a small pacey striker's feet, that is where I would be worried if I was Unai Emery. It's all about those two defensive midfielders, El Nene and Gwendozi, to really cover the two centre halves, protect them channel their inner Steven and Zonzies. But anyway, guys, I have been Statman Dave. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button into oblivion. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Next Monday, there'll be another poll for next week's tactical preview. So make sure you get onto my YouTube channel and vote, vote, vote. So I'll be previewing one of the big boys like Huddersfield Town. Anyway, guys, see you later. If you've enjoyed this content, why not go and check out how Emery's going to set Arsenal up this season or also my Premier League predictions where I've put Arsenal in the top four. Any Arsenal fans have got to take a look at that.